start talking about the guitar you played in and uh, uh, I think it's a cool collaboration that you can elaborate on as much as you can. Yeah. So I think this one has a long backstory that starts out with this one over here. Um, so this has three strings on it. I don't know if you could tell. Yep. But that all started when I was probably around, so I'm just going to do the whole thing. Go for it. When I was about I grew up, my dad was a musician, there was always music in the house, he was primarily like a blues player, a lot of slide. Every single guitar in the house was in open tuning, which kind of fucking sucks when you're learning guitar, <laughs> because you, you, know, you pick up a guitar and you can't really do anything on it. But uh, he got this, I think it's 80s Epiphone, and uh, it was also in open tuning. But when I played it, uh, I broke part of the bridge. I don't know if you could see, but a couple of the saddles for it were just broken. But it was in open tuning, and so I had to take the strings off. And I was just playing the first three strings how they were, like D, A, D. Mm -hmm. um, um, and it was super easy. I realized that, whoa, I could just put my finger down, and it works like that. And, uh, you know, I was figuring out cool little chords that I could do. And I didn't have to think as much because, you know, half the strings, half the mind power. Yeah. But, and I was definitely aware of bands. Like, I loved Presidents of the United States of America. You know, like Peaches. Yeah, and, um, Peaches. And that was, and then this other band called Morphine, uh, Mark Salmon, two-string slide bass. And so I grew up around all that and, like, the B-52s. I love the B-52s. And that's, you know, like, four strings. And so uh, I had just the DAD on. And then my dad came in and he was like, you know, you're going to fuck up the guitar if you have all the tension on one side of the neck. If you're going to play like that, at least put it down the middle. Uh -huh. And that's when I, uh, he's, you know, tune it to G. And so I just took the first three, three strings and I put them on the second and tuned it to G, D, G. And it was really cool. I didn't notice it at first, but it gave me like sort of Rolling Stones vibes without, you know, having to think about what the top strings were doing. Mm -hmm. And so I started playing like that, and I was mainly playing drums. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but I saw, so when I was about nine years old, I saw It Might Get Loud. And after, like, feeling kind of alone as, like, listening to not, like, Miley Cyrus in yeah. school, like, listening to all this blues and like Led Zeppelin, seeing like Jack White's part and how he was just like alone in his room with like a drum set recording made me feel like that I wasn't alone and that if I pushed hard I could do it. Yeah. And like that always stuck with me and so like from then on I was just like in my room sitting on like garage band and you know playing away on three strings and you know bass and drums and making songs and then when I met Arrow I'd never played guitar in a band before. I played drums and bass. Mm -hmm. But she asked me if I played guitar. And I brought this. And this is what we started doing our first stuff with, just because you know, it was easier. And I had some songs that are already written on it. And it was pretty cool. Cut to like years later. So I played that in the beginning of the band. I played that one. And then I got another cheap Epiphone as the backup, okay. just because you know, they're like $100. 
There's a black one back there. But then I was at the NAMM show, I think three or four, four years ago, with my aunt who makes guitar straps. Her name's Jody Head. Like, if I used another kind of guitar straps, I would be murdered. <laughs> but, uh, and then the booth right across was Parsons Guitars. And I remembered, you know, from watching the movie, I was like, oh, I think that, I think those are the same type of guitars Jack played in those movies. Mm -hmm. And I went over there and I talked to him and I was like, I really like your guitars and your work. I can never afford anything that you do, but you know, it's nice to meet you. Uh -huh. And like over just like the three days of, you know, like being bored, I started talking to him more about, you know, like three strings and stuff. And eventually it became the, I want to make you a guitar kind of thing. And he had this guitar called the Bat that he was doing, and it was brown, and it had two pickups, and, uh, and I was playing these, this white falcon back here. And I thought, well, our first record came out, and I was like, our colors are kind of uh, white and red, and, and uh, I only use one pickup, really. Uh, even on a Telecaster, I'm just always on the bridge pickup, and just with the Bigsby. And I put the Bigsby on that because I'm also a huge Neil Young fan. I mean who isn't, yeah, like, one black. of the most underrated guitar players ever. Like, when he does a solo, it's just perfect. But one year later, I got this, and I've been playing it ever since. And it, so Randy made this. You know, it has, like, a cool little pedal. One, one pickup, one volume knob, and then just a pedal inside. And I took it around the world and, you know, through it and it's got all beat up and it still works really well and I love it. Now Henry, you said there's a pedal inside? Yeah, there's a pedal inside. So what, what kind of circuitry were like? Is it a fuzz? Is it a boost? Okay, so there's this guy named heavy R2R Electric. No. Uh, he makes these treble boosters that I think everybody now is using because they're just so good, but he makes them in his kitchen. <laughs> like, he's only, I think he's made like 700 of them, but they're the best treble boosters. Um, I have one on my board too, but he had the idea that he had this old, I guess in 1966 or something, Gretsch put a treble booster inside their guitar and they had the circuit and uh, it was kind of like plastic to, around it. And Chris had one of them, I don't know how he got a hold of one, but. Uh, I contacted him and I was like, what if you put a treble booster inside? And he says, I have the actual Gretsch one we could try to recreate. And so he put that inside these guitars and wow. they sound amazing. Now, but, is it yeah. something you use all the time or is it kind of like just uh, subtlety, like in, in a sense, like, you know, you're going to go for it, you kick it on, or is, it, is that pretty much always yeah. engaged? When I, go for a, when I go for a solo, I turn it on. Okay. But, because it's, it's a lot. Can we hear like, like an on and off difference? Yeah, let me play another one. Okay. Uh, but so yeah, and then, so this was the first one and I would be playing this half the set and then regular six string half the set. Okay. And then Randy thought that maybe I'd probably like a six string version.